Blog Talk Radio. Montana. I'm Nancy Quinn. I'm so glad that you decided to join me tonight on News from the Mountain. I have my teacup in my hand and I'm ready to start our conversations together. It is a call-in show. The number is 516-387-1756. I'm happy to chat with you and answer any questions that you may have. You know, being able to help you in some way or satisfy your curiosity or just entertain you with some of the stories and things that happen to us, it's a real privilege for me. So before I get started with that, I just wanted to uh, extend my thanks. I do have a little news this month. I wanted to mention that I will be in Great Falls, Montana on Saturday, July the 27th for a book signing in the Barnes & Noble store. I'll be there from 11 a.m. until around 3 p.m. So I hope to see you. I know I have some listeners in the Great Falls area, and maybe the rest of you would be willing to uh, jump on a plane or get in the car and come see me anyway. My other news that I wanted to share with you tonight is Amazon.com has chosen my book for its prime reading program. So if you're a member of Amazon under the prime membership, you can download the book for free. And it, it was really exciting for me to find out this news. Even my publisher said they don't really share the information on how they choose these books to be in the program. But uh, I'm really happy that I'm there. And so this way a lot of people will be able to begin to find out more about my work and have a chance to read the book. Let's see, what else do I have here? Oh, I'm also going to be interviewed this Saturday, July the 13th at 4 p.m. Mountain Time on a radio program called Voices of the West. So if you can't listen live, I will post a link through social media and I'll post it on my website as well after the interview is uploaded. I also have a new baking video that posted, the Ultimate Pumpkin Chocolate Chip Cookie. I hope that you'll go over to my YouTube channel and take a look at that. It's one of my favorite recipes. I really enjoy it. The family likes it. And what's great about that one is you can bake a huge batch. It makes, oh, five or six dozen, I suppose, depending on the size of the cookie. And it's good for your potlucks and your barbecues and your cookouts and things where you have to take a batch of something. And if you don't want to use it that way, the rest of them will freeze in the freezer, and then you can have them for any time that you want. Well, I have to tell you, I felt a little bad when I read in the news a few days ago that we had a grizzly bear that was hit by a semi-truck. It was in a nearby town, not too far from where I live, actually. This is the time of year where they're on the move and they're foraging for food. So they're going to be out and about. And I believe it happened at night. I'm not completely sure. But since the bears are moving and we've been having more reports of them, I decided to try to share some information and and give you all a a little quiz at home. And I was just wondering, are you bear smart? Black bears and grizzly bears are different. Um, It surprised me, actually, how many people use the terms 
interchangeably or just kind of think they're one in the same. But they're two different species. Now, the grizzly bears have smaller ears and larger claws. Now, I know you probably don't want to get that close to find that out, but I've noticed that when we've had a couple of them come through the yard, that is one of the things that I actually look for because when you're looking at them far away, sometimes it can be hard to tell. So what else distinguishes a black bear from a grizzly? Well, it's a distinct hump in the shoulder. And a lot of people think it's actually in the back, but it isn't. It's on the shoulder. So that's something that I tend to look for, too, when they come in to the yard, and I'm trying to distinguish exactly what's out there. Of course, you know, when I don't have my glasses on, that's a physical feature that is really hard for me to find. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pause for a minute from our little quiz because I have a call that came in, so let's welcome who's here. Welcome in. Hello. Hello, caller. Okay, let's, is that not working? Caller with the 256 area code. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, now I can. Yeah. I couldn't hear you. I don't, I don't know what it was. Let's, let's blame it on the computer and the software. Uh, close enough. That's good enough. You doing okay tonight? I'm doing just fine. Is that you, Randall? This is Randall. <laughs> yes. You know, I should do something really special for you. You deserve a prize or something because I, it just pleases me so much that you would call. I don't think you've ever missed a show, have you? No, no. I really enjoy hearing what you have to say about stuff. stuff. I always learn a lot by listening well, that makes me feel really great, and, and I appreciate you calling back again. How are things in Alabama? It's pretty hot down here now. It's right up about 100 degrees every day. Oh, my, is it that bad? Wow. Yeah, we're, not, we're not having that. Um, in fact, today was probably the first day that we had some nice weather in a long time, and we've wow. been having more rain and cold and in the 40s and 50s, so... I think it hit about 75 today, which was very nice, a very nice change. So summer might oh, be here yeah, for us. Yeah, well, be glad. It, our, our humidity is so high down here. I mean, That's you know, true. It, I it, remember, it, yeah, being in, being in the south, you do have a really high humidity, and I remember that from the time that I spent in Florida. Well, here, uh, Randall, let me welcome someone else in because they just popped in. Okay, go ahead. Let me do that. Okay. Hello, caller. Can you introduce yourself? This is Cherokee calling. Well, hello, and how are you tonight? I'm okay. No news, but I'm okay. All right. Well, we've got Randall on the line, too, and I thought Hi, if you Randall. guys want Oh, there he is. Hey, Hi. how you doing there, Miss Wolf? Okay. How are you? <laughs> oh, just hanging in there. We got up to 90 today, so. Oh, 90, so I you're having on the summer car too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all, we're all getting ready to move up to Alaska during the summertime. <laughs> you know, I saw somebody sent me the the cutest little video the other day and it showed this moose and it was sitting in somebody's front yard in Alaska and they had the sprinkler on and it was sitting under the sprinkler. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> that was cute. And I thought that was so cute. And I wondered <laughs> if I put a sprinkler out if my moose would do that here. I don't know. <laughs> you no probably get quite a few animals. Yeah, there's no telling what might crawl under that sprinkler. <laughs> well, we were having a fun little quiz here about are you bear smart? So 
I was because in the beginning, I don't know if you heard any of it. I'll just be really quick. But we have a lot of bears that are moving around now, and it's that time of year. So they're looking for yeah. food, and, and, yeah, so they're around. And sometimes when they come by, now I realize they may not come by through your neighborhood, but when they come by through my yard, I'm always trying to look and see, okay, which one is it, you know, because I, I need to know that. It's just important information. And yeah. so we were talking yeah. about how I look for their ears and I look for their claws. But if you happen to be out with one, and I hope you never do, there are signs of aggression that they do. So what do you think one of them are? Do you know anything about the bears and what, what might constitute them being upset or having aggression? What about well, you? Well, being, being part of the Cherokee tribe, we uh, down in the Smokies, they do have a lot of bears moving around also. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I've kind of forgotten a lot of what I learned, but uh, one thing is that you are supposed to uh, not run from a bear. You're supposed to lay down and act like you're dead because they don't want to touch you if you're dead, you know. They might they might move you around a little bit to make sure you're dead, but they won't try to hurt you or nothing uh, because they don't, they're not fond of uh, spoiled meat. But uh, well, they're more they're more vegetarians than they are uh, carnivores. But uh, uh, they uh, they'll eat like anything that's yeah. I was going to say I think killed. they eat most things that they can that they can get a hold of. And although yeah, they do like they do like their meat, I have to say because we do have problems with them preying on the cows. And, yeah, fresh. Uh, I, yeah, my neighbors talk to me a lot about that because, remember, I don't have cows, and <laughs> I'm really hoping that I don't ever get cows as much as everyone's <laughs> trying to convince me to have cows. And I even get people sending me photographs of the cutest little, uh, the black and white, you know, Guernsey-type cows yep. with those guys, and they're saying, now, don't you want to have one of these, you know, in the yard? and. <laughs> Well, no. But that's fresh, 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 freshly killed meat is okay. But if mm-hmm. if it's been sitting there for a while, they try not to touch it because uh, they're you know they don't want dead. You know, I, I'm not saying it right, but they don't want spoiled meat. And, okay. Uh, so, uh, you, but yeah, they'll go after uh, elk or anything that's on the hoof, so to speak. So they say don't run from a, a bear and don't climb a tree because a, a bear will climb right up after you. But uh, that's to true. lay down you know, and act like you're uh, to yeah. to lay down and and act like you're you've been dead for a while. So and. Uh, <laughs> Well, if you a little bit and before, let it walk away. <laughs> before you would before you would actually fall into a faint, you know. Um, <laughs> if you if you see them doing something, for example, yeah. if you see them start swinging their heads, then yeah. you know that, that that's just not a good sign. And yeah. if you hear a sound like a kind of like a popping sound, you know, where they're kind of moving their jaws up and down, and you hear kind of a popping sound like that then, of course, that's that's not good either. And if they make any type of, of you know, growls or vocalizations in any kind of a way, it, you know, these are all signs of aggression. And I know a lot of people will tell you and you'll read on the websites about, oh, that's not true, and, you know, they're mostly fairly docile, and they may charge you, but that doesn't, you know, it's a false charge and they're not going to come at you. If If they're coming at you, then you have a problem, you know, <laughs> then, then, it's, then it's aggression. It's definitely a problem, and you need yeah. to, to be prepared for that. Um, and your comment before is actually really true about them being excellent climbers, but guess who's the excellent climber? Is it the black bear or the grizzly? What do you think, Randall? Are you there? Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, I would say the black bear. You're right. I I, I, I agree with black bear 
especially since you just said they were, he was right. <laughs> but also, uh, also, you know, another thing that you can do is try to wave your arms or get a get a, a big branch with some leaves on it mm-hmm. uh, and uh, try to try to make yourself appear much bigger than they are because they'll say, oh, well, that, that bear might be bigger than me, and I don't want to be bigger be than killed, I am. Yeah, so. I've, I've heard of yeah. people opening their jackets or something, you know, kind yeah. of holding their, their jacket open on each side. Um, yeah. You know, the best thing to do is, is really just very, very slowly try to back away <laughs> uh, and keep moving and putting more space between them and you. And, and yeah. you're right about running. Uh, because they're fast, they're they're very fast. Oh, yeah. and they will they will catch up with you, you know. So so that's yeah. not a good idea either. But do you think that bears are territorial? What oh you yeah. Think? You think they are? What very about you, much. Randall? Do you think bears are territorial? I don't really know, but you know, you mentioned about bears here on Facebook about a week or so ago. Mm-hmm. They showed in a they showed these two men that got attacked by a bear or grizzly bear. It was unreal what they what he done to them. I never seen nothing yeah. like it. The picture was covered up. So mm-hmm. me, I had to uncover it to see it. You had I to look at it. Them, yeah. But yeah. It was unreal well, what what he done to them. Yeah, fresh chills are are horrible. And there's this joke that Go ahead. There, there's this joke there's this joke that Two guys are confronted by a bear and they start running. And the one says, "You know, he's he's you know we shouldn't be running. He's going to catch us. He's right behind us." And the other one says, "I don't have to outrun him. I just have to outrun you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if he's really mean, he'll trip him and then keep going, won't he? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what are friends for, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, bears, as a rule, as a general rule, they're really not territorial. They tend to roam, oh. and they cover large, um, you know, miles and, and acres. And when what they're territorial about is is the idea of their food. So, like like what you were saying, Cherokee, if they have a a kill nearby, they will hang around for a few days, and, and they'll tend to want to be protective of that. But as a rule, they tend to roam and, and go, you know, where the food is, which is, oh. is a good thing for me because um, I actually <laughs> have a, a grizzly, I'm sorry, a black bear who is um, a mom, and she normally has one or two cubs. We've been here about 12 years now. And she has a den about, oh, maybe 300 yards or so up the mountain in the back of my house. And I know she's there because my neighbors who have their cows and check on their herds see her. And we know she's Mm -hmm. up there, but she doesn't come down here. And I've never seen her bring any of her young in. And for a long time, I thought it was because of the dogs, you know, because they, she could smell the dogs, and, and she knew that. And I was always happy with the fact that you stay in your place and I'll stay in mine. And although she returns to that den, she doesn't really live here during the summertime. And she takes them, and they go wherever they go and wherever the food is. And, and so it's kind of glad, I'm kind of glad they're not territorial, because I really wouldn't want to have to to deal with that on a daily basis. It's hard enough when I go down to the barn. I'm always keeping my eyes open because it's not unusual for, you know, for a bear to walk through or for a moose. We have a lot of moose. (laughs) And (laughs) the horses always tell me, there's a moose, there's a moose. (laughs) And as soon as I see that that look on their face, and, and as soon as I hear them, I just know, okay, there's a moose. And so I look around, and sure enough, he'll come one, and he'll just saunter on by, and he'll come right up to the to the fence and just jump, just one jump, 
not a running start or anything, just pop right over and go about his business, and he just acts like I own the place, and I'm just letting you stay here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, I, 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 guess I, I, I guess I should rephrase my comment about territorial because mm-hmm. the bear, I, I'm not that much up on grizzlies because we don't have that many grizzlies around here, uh, but the black bear do come through and stuff. And uh, when I was growing up, the countryside was a lot more rural, rural, rural than it is now. But mm-hmm. uh, they do return to their dens, but they will uh, move, like you said, during uh, the more active seasons. They do move. Now, a male bear will cover more ground than a female bear. Mm -hmm. And the female bears, I was always told, which could, I mean, I've been told a lot of things that are wrong, uh, but I was told that the female bears are the ones that are more territorial because they want that that den space. Plus they want, Mm -hmm. they they want to stay in their own area because of the babies and they don't want the babies roaming too far, but they'll go where the food is. Yeah. And, but yeah. And, the dens, and you have, a, you go have back a good point the there. Dens. And yeah, that's true. You do have a point. I would have to study it more in depth, but I can certainly see the rationale to what you're saying. And that very well may be true that the females tend yeah. to have more of a, a home you know, type area. I, overall, in general, I don't believe that bears have a lot of situational awareness, which is why a lot of times people can accidentally come right up on them because mm-hmm. they're not necessarily, you know, paying attention either. But but at least now yeah. you've got a little bit of bear information, and <laughs> now you just feel I've scared you and you have to carry bear spray to your mailbox. I didn't want to do that. But. You know, that wasn't you know, my intention. Another... <laughs> Another another joke is how they say you know to carry bears bear spray and to uh, have like little little uh, bells on your shoelaces so oh, a yeah. bear uh-huh. can hear you coming. And yeah. the joke is that uh, how do you tell uh, the difference between a in uh, uh, the scat of a bear whether it was a black bear or a, a grizzly. And the black bears, uh, they uh, they don't usually eat humans, but a, a grizzly, you'll know that it's a uh, it, it's a grizzly because uh, the scats will smell like pepper and will have uh, bells. bells in <laughs> in the scat. <laughs> well, you know, Meaning that they would gonna... kill you. <laughs> well. On that moving, note, I think we'll on. Change, changing the subject on that note there, um, <laughs> I actually had some some interesting things that I found out about about all things dandelions, if you can believe it, and not something oh, yeah. I would normally look up, but I wanted to ask you because I had someone I was talking to, and they live in a neighborhood and they have a yard. And they were very upset about all these dandelions in their yard. And they were trying to figure out all these ways to kill them and poison them and pull them up, and they were just so upset about these dandelions. Now, I've lived in neighborhoods off and on throughout my life, and, you know, personally the dandelions didn't bother me, but but they seemed to bother a lot of people. And I just thought they were pretty and didn't really mind. But do you do you guys pull the weeds or or dandelions out of your yards, or do you think they're okay? What they're about okay you, with me. They're, they're okay, okay with, with you? me. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm, yeah, my neighbors would actually get angry with me because they said that if I didn't kill them off, they what? would spread into their yards, which is actually true. Well, um, yes, it does. They do, they do go with it, the wind. It's a wind-borne plant, but it's also very they, medicinal. Well, it very is, you know, I... And also very good eating. 
That's what I thought I'd heard that they was good to eat. I never have eaten none. Yeah, we. Well, eat, you eat. can eat them. You've you never, never heard eat. of dandelion wine? No, I've heard that some people make tea out of it. Yeah, dandelion wine, and there's a. Uh, you can make a tonic. They call it a spring tonic, and uh, it it's good for what ails you, and. Uh, but uh, it's a, it's considered another green, like kale and lettuce and uh, uh, spinach. Uh, they uh, cut the roots off and cut the green part and serve it with uh, ham, hock, or uh, beans, and uh, it's well. It's, you're you're right about that, and in fact, all. All parts of the plant are actually edible, and and you're correct. Oh, yeah. Some people make tea out of it. Um, I read that it can be eaten raw, and yeah. the roots go really, really deep into the ground. And when you pull them out, you can peel them and eat them, yeah. you know, like any other vegetable. And uh, mm-hmm. you can grind them, grind the roots too, to make a kind of coffee. Now, don't tell Starbucks yeah. that because now they'll be having you know <laughs> black coffee. But you can actually make a coffee out of it, and and uh, you're you're right too. I think it was the Greeks and the Romans that that started eating them as salads, mm-hmm. and even now people use the medicine. They use it for uh, upset stomachs and and joint mm-hmm. pain. And so yeah. it's true. So. I I wondered why, even after all these years, because I think that these dandelions probably evolved about 30 million years ago, and mm-hmm. populated the planet. You know, so they're they're just about everywhere, and I'm wondering why. You know, they're so maligned and and everybody's so negative about them, uh, because they apparently have been used for all this time as, like you said, food and and medicine and things, and I, I guess we've gotten more and more away from that kind of thing. And But I wasn't going to argue with my neighbor because, you know, it's it's their yard and, <laughs> and they can do what they want, you know, with their dandelions. But when I started hearing them bemoaning it again, I thought, you know what, I'm going to find out a little bit more about this because they just don't bother me, you know, having a dandelion well, in the yard. Well, well the Indians uh, taught the settlers uh, so a lot of the medicinal purposes and just food purposes to mm-hmm. uh, grow, and they would they uh, which teach them how to use uh, yarrow root, and uh, right. I'm not pronouncing that right, probably, but uh, and uh, there's soapweed and and stuff like and aloe plants. That are good for burns and scrapes. It's a good antiseptic. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of different plants and and things that you can use, like you said, natural you know natural things that you can use for medicines and foods and stuff. And in fact, that that can actually be a whole other program on their own. I I did want to sure. change the subject because sure. there, and I'm looking at my time that I have left because I wanted to address Sorry. an email that I got from somebody. And I want I wanted to see if I can maybe give them some suggestions or something to help them. And, in fact, I received the email this morning, and that's what really got me thinking. And I, I won't say who it is, but it came from a woman, and she said, I want to call in your show, but I'm too nervous. I just can't do it. How do you know what to say? And so I really thought that we should talk just for a few minutes and, and address the idea of of fear, you know, of, of fear in itself, because it can be paralyzing in so many ways. And, and something yes. that can maybe seem very frightening or upsetting to one person, somebody else would just look at them with a blank stare and think, what, why does this, you know, bother you? I mean, it's such a personal thing, but... I understand what what she was saying, and I have to say that sometimes I get a little nervous, you know, before the show because I don't want to disappoint anybody, and I certainly don't want to bore you to tears. And and fear in itself is a real bear, 
excuse the pun, a real bear to go with. And so I try, I try to look at it in in some type of perspective. And of course, if you call me, I'm I'm certainly not going to put you on the on the spot and make you uncomfortable, right, Randall? Right, Randall? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm not going to put you on the spot, am I? Right, Cherokee? No, not at all. <laughs> Well, what I, really wanted, yeah. <laughs> what I really wanted to say was the idea that, I mean, I know there's fear, like we were talking about earlier, a real threat. And, and it's a lot of people are afraid when you have a real physical threat in front of you, then, yes, fear is very real. But in its own, an acronym I like is false evidence appearing real is fear. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. when you're talking about more perceived kinds of threats, we should all kind of look at it, you know, with the idea of, okay, what is it that's really bothering me? And then even maybe try to do it when you're afraid. Because, you know, courage isn't the absence of fear. Courage is just getting out there and doing it even though you're scared out of your wits. And Oh, yeah. You know, so... I would hate to think of somebody not having an enjoyable experience because they're afraid. And the other thing that I like to tell myself when I start to feel kind of nervous or, or, or frightened or uncomfortable or, you know, I can't do this or it's not going to work out, is the idea that fear can also mean face everything and rise. So those are just a couple little tricks that, you know, that I use on my own. So, um, Randall, you're probably never afraid of anything, but if you feel nervous or uncomfortable about something, do you have some advice you can lend about getting over a fear? The only thing that I could say is if something bothers me that bad and I'm willing to do it bad enough, I always think somebody else done it. Why not mm-hmm. me? That's a good one. Yeah. So you can use someone else as inspiration and, like you said, well, feel I, like... Well, I, I don't put a face or a name to it. I just think somebody else done it. Well, why not me? Okay. That's good. Yeah, that's excellent. What about you, Cherokee? Is yeah. there something that you want to add as far as some advice you could offer to somebody that really wants to do something? Okay, but but just feels like they can't. Well, two things basically is is two mottos, quote unquote. Uh, we've been using it in the VA for uh, military sexual trauma victims: is breathe in courage and exhale fear. Oh, that's and, that's a good one. I love uh, that too. Mm-hmm. And and then another one is. Uh, Practice makes perfect, so be careful what you practice. And sometimes, uh, like I'm, in essence, really shy and backwards. Being in a wheelchair and stuff, you feel like you're being seen and stuff and critiqued. But uh, when we went on our trip up to New York, uh, I was noticing people taking pictures. And, of course, one person always got left out of the picture because they had to actually take it. And Mm -hmm. I felt like I was telling me to try to get out of my comfort zone and offer to take the picture so the whole group could be, or the whole family, or even mom and dad and Mm stuff. And and the more I, I practiced that, the more I got more used to saying, you know, well... You know, I can do this, you know, and Mm -hmm. and if you you want to try something, take it step by step, take baby steps, and uh, somebody told me, I I can't remember who it was, but they said, do something nice for yourself, and that that was something I never would really (laughs) do that much of, but Uh the more I started doing something nice for myself, the more I started accepting that I deserved that happiness 
and that it was. Yeah, I wonder who said that. Mm -hmm. I don't know who. Just one of these weird women. Yeah, just some weird woman, you know, who videos and writes books. Yeah, who who pays attention to her? Yeah. Um, Yeah, one of these authors, you know. But yeah, you know, just just take just take stuff, you know, and and don't be afraid to experience life. Or, or to experience, you, you know, you can always try something and say, well, I didn't like that as much as I thought I'd do it. Or, that's, you know, that true. didn't work out. Well, okay, but at least try it, you know, because you're robbing that's yourself true. of Another some thing happiness. You are. You are robbing yourself of some happiness. And I do kind of hate to think of somebody that really wanted to call and talk in, but you know, they were just kind of upset and I or frightened. And, I, I mean, I don't blame them because, like I said, everybody's got things that bother them. There are really some interesting fears out there, and they all have names that are scientific, and I can't even pronounce them. They're so long. But, you know, there's, there's, there's fear of, of leaving your home. There's, there's fear of bald people. There's fear of milk. There's fear of, I mean, if, if you have a fear, it probably <laughs> yeah. has a name. And... So we a, don't bite. <laughs> yeah. So it's a pretty common, you know, it's a pretty common thing. But you're right. When you start doing a few little nice things for yourself and you start kind of giving yourself permission to feel that way, and, and you just then it doesn't have so much power. The other thing I like to yeah. think about, yeah, is the idea that, okay, Will this really be a big deal five minutes from now or five years from now? Mm, you know, probably not. Um, if you if you do make a mistake or you are feeling awkward, now here I am saying this and this is recorded. You know, so everyone's gonna gonna hear it for a long time. So what do I know what I'm saying? But but the idea in general is, don't blow it up bigger than it really is. And so, that's right. Amen well, to that. Well, yeah, just oh, don't make it larger than it, you know, than it has to be, because most things that we do in the end, you know, they're not going to matter. They're not life-altering, changing situations. And once you kind of put them down in perspective, and they don't feel like this great big monster that's standing up in front of you, it's more like just a little tiny monster that you can hold in your hand or something, then you get a better perspective of it, and it doesn't seem as, as frightening. So that's another way of looking at and trying to manage things that intimidate you. And I, I think she's probably talking more about intimidation rather than, you know, fear. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think she's thinking, well, I'm just so frightened to do it. I think she just feels like, well, I just feel uncomfortable and I'm a little awkward. How can I get over that? But even your big fears really big fears and at some point in your life everybody has to face something really big and I've come through a couple of them myself and it also helps you again have a perspective so that the small things that bother you you just look at them and think well they're not that you know they're not that large Um, so those are kind of my best ways that I could give any advice that might help and it's uh-huh. true. Doing doing a little something for yourself and building your own self confidence. Thinking back on things that you have done that you have accomplished and felt good about. That's another way you can give yourself a little confidence boost is well, gee, I did this and I've done that and you know, the last time I did this it worked out and so start start putting a bunch of things in the win column about yourself and You'd be surprised if you did that. You'll find that you have a whole lot of things that you have accomplished and done well and be able to be proud of. And actually, the things that didn't work out so well, you don't have so many of those. Yep. So that's kind Very of another, good advice. Yeah, some more advice that I can that I can give. I don't know, Randall. What do you think? Was there any other thing that you could mention that would help in this situation? Well, well, honestly, now you may take this, they may take this the wrong way. But if the person is listening right now, that was afraid to call in, 
I think if she would just call in and talk to you, she'd forget about that. Oh, you that's know, just right. Talk to you like we're talking. Yeah, and that's an excellent point. Is, and I should have thought of that myself, Randall. Thanks for bringing that up. But sometimes yeah. you just have to step in and do it because the fear of not doing it is actually bigger than once you get started. And that's right. Once All you're she's got to do is, or, yeah. or yeah, he, whoever, you're in the moment, just call in and just go to talk it to you, and they'll be done forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty friendly place here. And, uh, yeah, I, real. it's real friendly. I, I, think that, well, I think that she would be very comfortable in, in chatting oh, and talking and, but, but you made I'm an excellent I'm almost paused if she would be. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> we're, we're all friends here. Oh, yes. That's true. And, and, and you're right. You know, the, I like to think that the people that call in will make a new friend. And, yeah. And even if it's only a friendship that, that you visit once a month and we get along and, and talk well, or there may even be a friendship that will continue on later. But sometimes you just have to get over that initial concern. And then once you start, you're right, you forget all about it. I used to tell my That's girls, right. yeah, when, when, when they were younger, they competed in horse shows. And they did both English riding and in Western. And so we would bring two changes of, of costume because they would do the English events and the Western events. Well, before we would get there, my oldest in particular would be so nervous. I mean, just tummy nervous and feeling weak and just really, really nervous because she not only had to manage her horse, but she had to, you know, compete and, and remember to do everything that you're supposed to be doing. And, and she'd say, oh, Mom, you know, I'm so scared. And I would look at her little pale face, and I could see it was true. And I said, well, hon, the worst part is just waiting for it to happen. Once you get on the horse and once you begin the routines and once you start focusing on what you're doing, you're going to forget all about that, and you won't be afraid anymore. And it, yeah. it was true because when she finished and her competitions, and I said, how are you doing? She said, Mom, you're right. She said, the minute I picked up the reins and, and – you know, told the horse to go and really started focusing on what I needed to to be doing, then I wasn't afraid anymore. It was all done and over. So sometimes just the whole idea of it is a little more intimidating than actually getting into it. And I said, well, did you like it? Was it fun for you? Because competition isn't for everybody. Some people take it very seriously, and it's a very stressful situation. But my goal for the girls was just to have fun. I didn't care if they won ribbons or or not. They did, but I just wanted them to enjoy the experience and learn something from it. And they said, no, it was fun, and they really liked it. And I said, well, then that's, you're a winner already. And, of course, they did bring home ribbons, I have to brag. Got a couple of blue <laughs> ones, his first, a couple of third place, a couple of second place. And, but it, that wasn't the point. You know, the point was getting them out there, having some fun, learning things about horses, learning things about themselves, because it is, a, it is hard to put yourself out there, whether it's a competition or, or a piece of art that someone's going to judge or look at or a book or, or getting on the phone and, and having a conversation or trying to, to host a, you know, a radio program once a month. I mean, it's all you are. You're, you're putting the best of yourself out there, and you're a little worried. But I think most people are pretty kind, and... I think they appreciate the effort, and uh, so I'm kind of hoping that that all of this information will will kind of give her a give her a boost, and then maybe we'll hear from her and and other people like her. So, well, I yeah. thought I thought I'm looking at my note here. I've got about I've only got about 15 minutes or so before our time runs out. But I have a funny story to share, and I thought we'd end on something kind of funny. Now, Go for it. you know that Whiskey, who is my oldest horse, is now 32, and next week I'm going to be posting wow. a video. I know. I can't hardly believe it myself. I'm going to be posting a little, a little birthday celebration we did for him. And 
you can see him and wish him a happy birthday and everything because he'll he's 32 but he gets fed a lot of special feed twice a twice a day in the round pen which we now refer to as his private dining room Mm -hmm. because we keep him separate because the other two boys which is wilson and star they they want to push him around and steal his food and I know it's not nice, but it's very horse thing to do. And, I, you know, they completely forget their manners, and it's just it's embarrassing. So I say don't bother him, you know, let him eat. And, and the funny thing is, is that I give the other two food as well. So not only do no. they want their own food, and they gobble it down, but then who's ever still eating, they mm-hmm. think, oh, well, I finished mine, I want theirs. Well, there's, there's somebody else that wants theirs and when I put whiskey in the private dining room all of a sudden I see all these little little heads start popping up from the field and it's like a convention or a parade (laughs) and I see them and they begin to gather and all of a sudden I've got 12 15, 18 gophers. Mm. And they are pouring mm. in to the private dining room. Some of them have become so fat that their bellies just drag <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> and Must be they, bring, <laughs> they bring their neighbors. They bring their young. They bring their aunts and uncles. They just bring everybody. And I see this wave coming at me, and it really creeps me out because I'm not a rodent person. They they come over, and I'll say, now go, go, and I'll try to shoo them away. And they actually just stand there like an inch or two from my boot. And I'm completely surrounded. It's it's like the birds. It's like a horror movie. And so I try to shoo them off, and they may step away and run a little bit, but then they come back, and they jump into Whiskey's bowl. They take the food out of his bowl while his face is still in it and then step away, you know, a foot or two and sit there and just eat. Mm. And so I've got to figure out, you know, what to do with this because the feed is very expensive. And I really can't keep feeding, you know, last year we fed maybe one or two of them, and I didn't worry a whole bunch about it. But now the word is out that the buffet is open, and they're just coming from all different counties and everything, and they're just coming in twice a day. And if I'm late feeding him, they're all standing there in the private dining room, (laughs) and they're waiting. They're waiting for me to come down there. So they have their own, you know, internal clock. So I asked Nancy, can't you put a can't you put a nail on the side of the barn and put it in a bucket and put the nail put the bucket on the nail and let him eat out of the bucket? I can, but you know what he does? He's he's older and he doesn't have a lot of teeth. And what happens is well, when he chews, he drops it out of his mouth onto the ground, and that's what they're coming for. Well, and I mean, so, even like they've got. They've got these, uh, like, uh, wash tubs and stuff that you could put on the side. Mm -hmm. And and that way, if he would drop it, it would go right into the wash tub. Gophers can't climb up a side of a barn, I don't think, but I don't know for sure. Actually, they're they're kind of climbing. Yeah, they could probably because they sometimes get into the water and stuff. So they they could they can climb oh. up a little bit of that. Um, I, I'm, we're we're working the issue, you know, as any good military family does. We're we're trying to figure it out. Of course, my husband's first thing is, you know, well, we'll just pop them all, or we'll poison them, or we'll do all this stuff. <laughs> you might as well bomb them. With the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the enemy army is coming at us, you know, so let's just hit them full out. And I said, well, let's th- let's just think about this for a minute because I I don't, 
you know, we, we have to do something, I agree, but let's try to think it over because I really didn't want to go completely drastic and, you know, start setting landmines or anything. Um, don't, don't want to yeah, go it's, too much. If you might be eating uh, gopher stew. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, that's know. right. <laughs> make you sure know, you I'm a pretty good cook. But I, yeah, well, I don't know about that. He showed that he cooked that one day, so next time he wants to cook, make sure that you have a banana split again or something. <laughs> where where did you get to see that? <laughs> so oh, yeah. Packing. Well, if he ever decides to make me a meal, it better be a banana split, right? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to double check what's going in that stew pot, right? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you might be well, wanting to get rid of the evidence. <laughs> I know it's been. And, and, and don't ask for don't ask for a fur coat. <laughs> oh yeah, don't do that. You're right. I just I think I'll I think I'll skip that. I'll just tell him I have plenty of coats. I don't need any shawls or stoles or anything like that. Yep. But Make it's sure. uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it's been I'd quite be a, It's been quite an interesting uh, interesting study in animal behavior. And yeah. there I, I didn't even know we had that many, but now we do. And so I'll have to, I'll have to come up. Well, with you're painting with. them. <laughs> Start painting them. Is They're that not, what you said? No, you're feeding them. Oh, I'm feeding them. You know, okay, I thought you said course. start painting them. <laughs> They've got the best restaurant in town. <laughs> Nancy's cooking well, again. <laughs> they do. Yeah, they they do, and and they know it's there, and so like you know, creature a habit and. But it's kind of it's it's kind of funny in a way. So, yeah, whiskey doesn't care. And then when I let him out after he's finished, and then Wilson comes in, and he'll try to compete with the Gophers <laughs> because he wants to know, he wants to get that food on the ground. And so he will have his nose to the ground, and he's trying to get the little little bites and nibbles. And the Gophers are around there, and he'll take his nose and he'll shove them right in the tail end, you know, right in the little booty <laughs> bottom, and he'll just shove them away. And, no, I want that bite, and he'll eat it, and then they just spin right around and come right back. And I look, and all around his face, there's just a bunch of them, and he's just taking his nose, and he's just shoving them away and shoving them away. <laughs> and they come right back, and they actually fight over these little bitty, gra- you know, grains of, of horse feed. And it's something. I actually got it on video, so I'm, I'm going to do something with it. Just you you, you got to post it now. You gotta post it. We gotta yeah, I'm, it. I'm gonna put one together <laughs> yeah. because yeah. I got some of it on film, and it's just you just look at that and you think you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you, you just you can't, and and of course there's the entertainment factor, but on the flip side yeah. of that, you know they carry diseases, and you yes. really don't want them getting into the food, and of course. You know, whatever they leave behind um, when they go to the bathroom and stuff, that that carries diseases. And yeah. so you have to be really yeah. clean, and you don't want this infestation around the barn. And um, Especially at his age, you know, because with, with animals being that old or that young, yeah. having just turned 58, uh, we have to uh, kind of watch out for ourselves and... Uh, like you said, you know, he could he could get something and really hurt him, you know. That's true. He could get sick, and also you can. Uh, I know the mice carry things like hantavirus, and and some of those things are deadly. We we almost lost a neighbor that was a few miles from us. It happened a couple of years ago, but she got it. She was cleaning out her hen house and was mm-hmm. breathing in the waste, you know, that the mice leave. And she caught the virus, and she was in the hospital for a long time. And she almost didn't make it. Uh, she did yeah. survive, which we're so grateful. But there are some serious things out there that can make you pretty sick. And so I don't want that for anybody in the family or for the, the horses either. So, 
We will definitely hey, Randall. Our time. Yeah. Randall, next time yeah. we're going to hear uh, that uh, Nancy is feeding the gophers chicken noodle soup. <laughs> <laughs> to keep They'll them well, like so he doesn't get sick. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Well, they do say that it cures all ails, right? Chicken noodle soup. You yep. never know what it will. You never know what it cures. Oh Lord, have mercy. Well, guys, it's it's hard to believe, but our time is up. I'm looking at my clock. I've only got oh. a couple of minutes, so oh. I want to wrap things up. I want to tell you how much it means to me that that you call in it it really does and uh it's just been a wonderful hour and i really look forward to these chats every month and our next show is going to be wednesday august the 7th at the same time which is the 9 p.m eastern and 7 p.m mountain and i hope that everybody who listens will take a few minutes to visit my website which is at quinn wildlifeart.com and find out more about my work and our really I would definitely say unique lifestyle uh, here in the West that is well it, it's still very wild we, we live here among the wildlife and most of the time we all get along pretty well uh, but when we have a skirmish or two, it, it does make for some really interesting reading and, and a good story. So I wanted to thank you again, and I also wanted to thank the people that write to me because I do believe that every, every correspondence I get is a gift, and I'm just, I'm just much obliged for that and for the time that they take to, to want to write and want to find out more about what we're doing here. So on behalf of the moose and the deer and the elk and the foxes and the bears and the chipmunks and and the gophers, the gophers. <laughs> my horses, and little Penny Pup, who also sends her best wishes out, I guess I will just say good night. So thanks, Randall. Thanks, night, Jerry. Right? And we'll talk to you again hopefully soon, and I will say good night. Good night from the West. Good night. Good night. From the east Bye-bye. and the south. <laughs> Good Take night. Take care. Good night.